coming up on the Susie Orman Show. If you're a parent and you have kids heading to college soon, my Susie rule is for you. Also, stop giving yourself excuses, Sarah. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Everything I've said to you, but, 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 go on, continue to live your life just like this, Sarah. Watch your parents go down the drain because of you. And you ask me, can I afford it? I would like to buy a Pilates reformer. Everybody says, Susie, you would love Pilates, and I'm like, no, I don't. Hi, everybody. I'm Susie Orman, and you are watching The Susie Orman Show. This month, all month, is Financial Literacy Month. So I thought, why not start this out with a Susie rule? Now, maybe you've watched The Susie Orman Show for years. Maybe you're new. But there is one rule that has been true from the first day I came on the show, and it will be true to the very last day and long after I am gone. And it's a very simple rule. Parents, this one's for you. I don't care how much you love your children. I don't care if your kids are going, but mom, but dad, I need you to help me. I need you to sign a private student loan for me so I can go to a college that I want to go to. I don't care what they say. You are never, and I mean never, and I mean never to sign a private student loan as a co-signer for a child. First of all, if you have to take out private student loans to go to college, whether it's you or your children, are you kidding me? You're then going to a school that you can't afford to go to, and rather than taking out loans, you should really think about changing where you go to school and go to someplace that you can afford. A private student loan, very, very different than a federal student loan. Federal student loans, you can consolidate. Federal student loans, you can go under the IBR method if the kid takes it out. Plus loans that you take out for your kids, the interest rate is fixed at 7.9%. They can be consolidated. So if you need to take out a loan, all right. If you want to take out a plus loan for your kids, even though I'm not so sure you should do that either, you can do so. But a private loan, I don't think so. Why? Private student loans, the interest rate is not fixed. If they want to, they can take you from 5% to 10% to 11% to 16%. Number two, private student loans cannot be consolidated. Private student loans, even if your child that you co-sign this loan for happens to die, in many circumstances, not all, but in many, you will still owe the monthly payment every single month, even though what? Your child isn't there. Private student loans are very, very dangerous in my opinion. So the Susie rule is very simple. You are never, ever, ever, and I can't say this enough, to take out a private student loan by co-signing one for your child. Do you get it? It's just that simple. And that brings me to my one-on-one -on -one tonight, Sarah. Sarah is here from San Francisco. She's 31 years old, single, but living with her boyfriend in a very nice trailer that her parents bought for their retirement. Her parents are also helping her pay her massive amount of student loan debt. All right, everybody, sit down for this. How much debt are we talking about? It's $192,000 thanks to five years and an expensive private art school. Sarah's been scraping by working for a natural food supermarket chain, bringing home $2,300 a month. She wrote to me because she doesn't like that her parents are helping support her. Sarah wants to stand on her own two feet, but doesn't know how to get there. Good evening, my dear Sarah. Hello, Susie. Oh, Sarah. All right, <laughs> I have to ask before we do anything else, $192,000 yes. of student loan debt. Now, the reason that I'm emphasizing that is when my producer, Sherry, was talking to you about all this and asked you, right. well, how much student loan debt do you have? You said approximately $120,000, $130,000. Yes. 
And she said, well, that's not what the paperwork says. The paperwork says 192,000. When she right. said 192,000 dollars, can you just tell me what that felt like? It was shocking. Uh, putting the paperwork together was the first time I saw the real number. Uh, so I always knew, like, I've kind of had the mantra of like, well, I could have bought a house with the student amount or the uh, amount of student loans that I have. But I, it was it was shocking to see the number and scary. All right. And when you took out all of this money, did all of it go to pay for an art school where you got a degree as a graphic designer, correct? It did. It went towards living expenses as well. And then, you know, I mean, there were there were times when I was a little bit frivolous with my money and. So it we just all kept, were girlfriend. We all just were. Kept Trust me, it's just how it happens out there. Yeah. The real shame here, and I know I should be blaming you and your parents. Didn't you know what you were getting into? You didn't, or you wouldn't have gotten into it. The real shame here is when financial institutions right. allow you to take out this much debt when possibly and probably knowing that you're never going to be able to pay it back. Like, really? Student loan debt that you can't discharge in bankruptcy? Really, financial institutions? I know. That's a whole nother show, however. All right, so now we're $192,000 in student loan debt. Yeah. $8,000 or so in credit card debt. Mm -hmm. And when you add up all of your monthly expenses in comparison to what you have coming in, we're still... $500 a month in deficit of you just paying your bills. Yeah. Okay. Now, here's the thing. People are saying, well, she's only $500 in deficit. She's paying for all of this. No. Her <laughs> yeah. parents, who are in their early 60s mm -hmm. and wanting to retire, her father has recently retired, her mother would like to retire in a year or two, have been paying $1,000 per month towards the private student loans that they co-signed for Sarah. Yes. All right. Do you think that they can easily afford that $1,000 a month? I think easily, no. I think currently they're comfortable enough where they can. But once my mother retires, I'm not really sure what the, what the situation's going to be like. I know that they've probably planned for it, but... I but don't you're think not it's going to sure. be comfortable. Yeah, I'm not totally right. sure. All right. Here's what has to stop in yeah. your life right here and right now. Yes. You cannot say the words anymore, I don't know. Okay. You cannot say the words or think them, I am not sure. Because you weren't sure how you were going to pay this back. You didn't know what it was really going to cost you to go right. to school. You, didn't, you weren't sure what kind of job you were going to get or if you even wanted to be a graphic designer. You weren't sure about any of those things. And now you're in a situation where we really, including Susie Orman, is all famushed. Is that a word? In terms of what do you do when you have $192,000 of student loans that can't be discharged in bankruptcy? Right. So... The first thing is this, if you want to be an adult and no longer be a child, you have to start acting like an adult. Okay. And it th why was that so hard? <laughs> Did you just hear that? All I asked you, I didn't get to the hard part yet. <laughs> that was the easiest thing I'm I about know. to ask you to do. Why? No, but all right, we have to go there now since you sighed. You're 31 years old. Do you not want to be an adult? I do want to be an adult so then desperately bad. why did you bad. sigh? Because it's so true. It's just, yes, I know. <laughs> and right. I feel like I've been put in this child position over and over again with my parents from just the position that we're in. And who put you there? I do, and they do, both All of right. us. So yeah. it's their fault as well, in your opinion. I, I don't want to blame them because they're doing yes, the best you that they do. can. No, do not, do not protect them right now because the way that you get out of a situation is to own what you think yeah. is true. Whether or not, it doesn't matter. Right. But they need to hear what you think, maybe for the yeah. first time in their life. And right. your life that you've been willing to tell them. Listen, I can look at your parents and I can tell you they are good good they people. <laughs> they love their children more than anything in life. You know that. Yes. But have their children, and I don't even care about your brother and your sister, has this one child 
loved them enough to constantly be honest with them and tell them how you think, my dear Sarah. So in your opinion, if I heard you correctly, partly how they've treated you has always made you feel like a child. Yes. All right. And you've bought into that because it's easier to be a child than to have to be grown up and deal with things that you don't know how to deal with. Definitely. <laughs> so even though they treated you like that, they didn't force you. No. They didn't force you to stay a child. You chose true. to stay a child. So the true blame here isn't on them. Right. It's on they me. They did it out of love. The true blame here is on you that it was easier to be a child than to be a grown-up and make intelligent financial decisions that that needed to be made because you liked your lifestyle. You liked living with the boyfriend. You liked working here. You liked it. You were having a great right. time. Right? Comfortable. Comfortable. Well, we're not so comfortable anymore. No. <laughs> we're not. Because here's the thing that's also happening. While your parents co-signed for about $92,000 of private student loans, $100,000 of those loans are in your name, Sarah. Right. 45,000 of those loans are currently in forbearance. Do you know what forbearance means? Yes, it's still accruing interest. So $45,000 is going to turn into 80,000, is going to turn into 100,000, right. and it's going to continue to grow. My real concern is this. Number one, the $45,000 you have in forbearance. So today, okay. right here and right now, I don't care if that means you don't eat again in your life. <laughs> okay. Okay? So you are going to get those loans out of forbearance. You are going to go on income-based repayment so that you can pay it off according to your income. So it might not really cost you hardly anything. Next. Your parents are paying $1,000 a month on private student loans that they are personally responsible for. Yeah. They are never going to get out of being personally responsible. Now, the interest rates on those loans, because they're private student loans, can go up to 10%, 11%, 15%, and they can continue to go up. So therefore, currently paying $1,000 a month, but they probably won't be able to afford $1,000 a month when and if Mama retires. Right. Here is my suggestion. All right. Do they own a home in California there? Yes. With you. All right. Do they have any equity in that home? Yes. Do they have at least $92,000 of equity in that home? That I don't know. All right. So, but chances are they do mm -hmm. because do they own the house outright? They don't. I believe they've refinanced to purchase property. With uh -huh. in the intention of building on the property. All right, so it may be that they may have to sell their property. Mm -hmm. It may be that they should refinance again. You're just going to have to ask them. But it would be a far wiser move, and everybody listening right now, I want you to think about this. If you have equity in your home currently, and you can take out, let's just say, a 30-year mortgage at 3%, 3.5% on $92,000 after income taxes of the write-off and everything, it might cost them two or $300 a month. Hmm. They could afford that two or $300 a month. In fact, they're going to afford it because you're going to pay it for them. Right. <laughs> you're the one who's going to pay it. And even if they sell that house to do something else, you're still going to pay that for them. Okay. Stop giving yourself excuses, Sarah. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Your parents are probably gonna have to give up their dream. You're gonna have to give up your dream lifestyle. And later, in wanting something, ask me, can I afford it? I sent a letter to the Green Bay Packers requesting season tickets. If I happen to deny you, I'm not saying I'm doing that, do that mean you're passed up and you have to wait another 30 years? Oh, probably 500 years. Welcome back to the Susie Orman Show. Your parents are paying $1,000 a month on private student loans that they are personally responsible for. It may be that they may have to sell their property. It may be that they should refinance again. They could afford that two or $300 a month. In fact, they're gonna afford it because you're gonna pay it for them. 
You're working how many jobs right now? I'm working one full-time job, plus I have a small business that I started that is my dream to become my full-time job. All right, and, and do you work seven days a week? I work five to five. six days a week. Ah, and yeah. do you work 24 hours a day? Uh, do, no, I don't work 24 hours a day. Do you work day. only eight hours a day? Uh, yes. Oh, well, guess what? Working That's about more than to, that. You yeah. are going to get. I don't care if you can ask for overtime there. I don't care if that means you have to go out and get another job. I don't care if that means you have to go out and get two or three jobs. Your right. parents are probably going to have to give up their dream. You're going to have to give up your dream lifestyle. Okay. Which means you don't have time to go out to eat. You don't have time to play. You don't have time to do anything anymore, including seeing this boyfriend of yours that lives in the trailer with you. <laughs> I don't know about him. That's another story with this. I'm leaving him out of the equation for now. But the thing that you're going to have to do is act like an adult. And an adult yes. that's responsible to those that they love will work two, three, four jobs a day at a time until they're able to get themselves on a path that they can be self-sufficient. Okay. Now, I went through all of your expenses. Mm -hmm. Here's how you are going to cut. This is not open for discussion. Okay. If you really want your life to change, I do. you have got to do what I'm about to tell you. Yes, ma'am. You go out to eat. You spend way too much money on food. I know. All right, well, now you know, so why didn't you do something about it? You okay. know it, but yet you continue to do it. It's so, hard when I work in a grocery store, um, and stocking my pantry makes me feel good. No, I, yeah, stocking I your pantry with food <laughs> and having no money in your financial pantries should make you feel horrible. Right. So $200 a month at least are being cut for food. You are not gonna go on any more vacations or give gifts of any type. If your mother or father wanna see you, then they have to send you the gas money, but they don't have the money to send you in gas, so they'll have to come see you and have a good time at the trailer that they're <laughs> letting you stay in. So that's right. almost $100 a month there. You spend $72 a month on clothes, just live on the clothes that you already have. You do not need to buy one more thing of clothing, especially in California. True. Sweetheart, you spend $50 a month on cats. You do not have $50 a month to spend on anything. Now, I get that you love your cats, and I get that animals are fabulous, but your parents are more important than cats. This is true. And your parents need this money so that you can pay your bills. Also, you spend $100 a month on a cell phone, way too much. Cut back by $50. It's now the only thing I have, though. I don't pay for uh, internet or cable or anything else. It's my Sweetheart, only. guess what? It is not the only thing you have. It's one thing too much. You okay. can't even afford that. Stop giving yourself excuses, Sarah. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Everything I have said to you, but, 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 go on, continue to live your life just like this, Sarah. Watch your parents go down the drain because of you. Watch your own life go down the drain because of you. Watch yourself get older, poorer, and more dependent because of you. Sarah, you're too good for that. I you're know. a beautiful woman. <laughs> you're a wonderful daughter or your parents wouldn't be there to help you. Right. Can't you just least love yourself as much as everybody else loves you? I'm going to try. <laughs> Here's where you start. I gave you starting points to talk respectfully and honestly with your parents and make a plan what the three of you are going to do together. Talk to them about refinancing and the suggestion that I made in case that helps them financially speaking, or they will choose to spend $1,000 a month for probably the next 10 years, and then that will be that. You're going to get yourself out of forbearance. You're going to okay. do income-based repayment. You're going to really get two, three, or four jobs so you can start saving money but the biggest thing that I want you to do is every night, I want you to look in the mirror before you go to bed. Every morning when you get up, I want you to look in the mirror. And I want you to say the truth. And the truth is this, Sarah, you are a wonderful woman, right? You are doing everything now you can to be an adult and be respectful. You are not going to sabotage yourself anymore. I love you, Sarah. Thank That's you. what you need. No, I'm not saying I love you. I don't know you enough to love you. But, but you're going to say to yourself, I love you, Sarah. You deserve to be loved. You deserve to be more and have more. Girlfriend, if you believe it, just go out and 
do it. Up next, you can't afford to miss, can I afford it? I would love to go to the Grand Canyon. If you say yes, I get to go. If you say no, I'll never get to go. How are you going to pay for this? Um, I'm going to take it out of my... Also, I want to buy a Chanel clutch. So what do you think I am going to say to you, seeing that you have $1,600 in credit card debt? Oh, no. What do you want to buy? Go to the Grand Canyon for Pilates Reformer. Chanel clutch. Welcome back, everybody. Now, what do you think we're about to do? Well, if you don't know, I'll tell you. We're about to do the Can I Afford It segment. This is where you call in. You tell me what it is that you want to buy. I ask you some money questions about your life, and I tell you if you can afford it or not. I then either approve or deny you. If I deny you, you usually go, ah, but it doesn't matter. You should be denied, but it's a fun game, so play along. Let's see. All right, Carol, what do you want to buy? Hey, Susie, thanks for helping me out with this. Anytime, I, Carol, what do you want to buy? I would love to go to the Grand Canyon for my 50th birthday. Mm, have you ever seen it? I've flown over it. Fabulous. And I need to go. It's just something I've always wanted All to right, do. So wait, you just said this is a need. And then you said this is something I always wanted to go. So now I'm so confused. Is it a need? Is there one? Oh, my God. Show me the money. It's both. It's both. both. All right. Show okay. me the money. My income combined is $8,700 a month. Yes. The expenses are $5,168 a month. Yes. I have a 30000 30-year fixed mortgage. Yes. And I have a savings of 44000 liquid. I have 462000 in investments. I have 219000 in my retirement. And if you say yes, I get to go. If you say no, I'll never get to go. <laughs> no well, pressure. Well, here's the thing. I looked at some of your money. You're a little short on emergency funds, right? Um, a little, because how are you going to pay for this? Um, I'm going to take it out of my... Um, saving. And then how much yeah. will that leave you? Um, out of my liquid? Yeah. That'll leave me like thirty to four? Thirty-four thousand? And yeah. then and then and then how much are your monthly expenses? Five thousand one hundred. Oh, so five thousand one hundred times oh. eight is forty thousand, which means you're short on emergency funds, right? So if you go to the Grand Canyon, you get hurt, and now you can't work. There goes our emergency fund. I'm so sorry, but you have been denied. Oh no! no. If you just had a little more money. So here's the thing. Okay. If you think the 50th is great, yeah. I'm here to tell you the 60th is even better. I've experienced <laughs> them both. Just save up for your 60th. Look at, I'm still young. I'm still vital. I could do the Grand Canyon now. Save more money. You are short on your retirement. You're short. Girlfriend, I love you. Anyway, Ravina, what do you want to buy? Hi, Susie. How are you? I'm good. So are you buttering me up? No. Oh, all right, sweetheart. What do you want to buy? I want to buy a Chanel clutch. Oh, you are most certainly buttering me up. The chances <laughs> of me approving you to spend $2,100 on a Chanel clutch. I really? know it's gorgeous. Go yes, I I'm in sure. LA. Oh, what oh, girl oh. does not have a clutch? Oh, well, you, why didn't you just tell me that you lived in L.A. to begin with? Oh, that just changes <laughs> everything, of course. That's when you start Doesn't to go a little ding-dong with money. Show me what you got, L.A. girl. Well, okay, let's see. So I bring home um, $3,600 a month. Um, my expenses are $2,490. Wait, wait, wait. You're 24, yeah. right? You are going to be bringing home $3,600 a month which is, in essence, you have to work three quarters of a month to pay for this clutch? Yes. Yes. All right. Go on. Keep going. All right. Okay. So um, my expenses are $2,590 um, with $500 in rent. I have $1,600 in credit card debt. And um, in my savings, I have fifty-one k in liquid and thirty k for retirement. And you have credit card debt at 22% yes. interest? Yes. Why are you not paying that off? Has the L.A. Um, fog gotten to your head? <laughs> I'm, I always thought it's good to have a little credit card debt, but I know. At 22% interest? 
At 22% interest, if you continue to pay 22% interest on that credit card debt, that is your Chanel bag, girlfriend. <laughs> I know, oh, I know, you're right. I know, I know. So what do you think I am going to say to you, seeing that you have $1,600 in credit card debt? Oh, no. Are you prepared? <laughs> I'm prepared. All right, I'm you prepared. are approved. You're approved. Oh, Let me tell please. you why, because everybody in the United States and in the world that's seen this going, what is credit card debt? You are going to take money and pay off the credit card debt. You yes. are 24 years of age and you have $50,000 saved. Yeah, that is a lot of money. You are saving for it. You are doing great. So if you want to reward yourself and spend $2,100 on a clutch, you know what? You go ahead and you do it. All right, Richard, what Hi, do you want to buy? Hi, Susie. Richard. Yeah, thank you so much for taking my call. Anytime. I, 32 years ago, I sent a letter to the Green Bay Packers requesting season tickets. Mm. And they put my name on the waiting list. And 32 years later, my name has risen to the top of some 90,000 fans. But a few things have changed since I got on the list. Yeah, you're 30 years older. Yeah, no kidding, huh? <laughs> I don't feel like it, but... Uh, I know, yes, that's, isn't that sad? We all get older and we all, because I'm older than you by seven years, uh, yeah. so I can talk to you like this. I believe like, you're my wife's age. Well, I there you go. Oh, so you were smart. You married an older uh, woman. Yes, I did. Yes, yes but it's like, good to me. You know, you, you, everybody thinks you're older and inside you're still 12. All right. So it's it's so you want to spend fifty three hundred dollars for season tickets. Do you already see them? Do you already get to go to one game, two game, three well, games a I year? Well, I actually uh, to make a long story short. In in Green Bay, they have what they call the gold package and the green package. The gold package was the original Milwaukee fans that had three games in Milwaukee. Well, they since shifted the games to Green Bay. So I've had those for 20 years. Got it. All right. But here's the real question. $5,300. And just before I answer, if you, I happen to, de if I happen to deny you, I'm not saying I'm doing that. Do that mean you're passed up and you have to wait another 30 years? Oh, probably 500 years. 500 years. All right. I will keep that in mind. Show me the money. Okay. Uh, our income is $5,100 a month. Of that, $1,100 is rental income. Yes. Our expenses are three thousand five hundred and sixty-four a month. Yep. We own uh, both of our homes outright. How much are those worth, just so I know? Uh, I believe our residence is two fifty, and then we have a rental in Scottsdale, Arizona, that's like one fifty. All right, go on. Uh, we have no debt. Good. Uh, we have liquid savings of roughly thirty-three thousand. Uh, investments of one hundred and eleven thousand. And retirement uh, to the tune of about 528. And you're 55 and your wife is not working, is that correct? She's uh, semi-retired. She will be turning 62 this year, so she will be collecting Social Security. At, Richard, yeah. do you not watch the Susie Orman Show? Have you not heard me say that you do not collect Social Security until you're at least 67? Here's the problem, and please don't be upset with me. You are denied. Oh. I know. And the reason you're denied is, number one, she should not collect Social Security till she's 67. If something were to happen to you, being the only wage earner, we don't have enough, really, in liquid and everything to possibly last you a year or two if that were the situation. You're not, you don't have a pension. You're looking at $600,000 in savings which today isn't going to generate enough money for you to live on, even if you're saving fully. Uh, kills me, Richard, but just enjoy the three games that you're already seeing. Oh, God. Jessica, what do you want to buy? I would like to buy a Pilates Reformer. A Pilates Reformer for $2,700. Mm. Yes. Yes, I know. Uh, I have worked out on those things. I do not love them. Oh, I love them. I know that's because you probably like look, years. I bet your body looks a whole lot better than mine. It's like <laughs> this thing, I don't know why. Everybody says, Susie, you would love Pilates. And I'm like, no, I don't. Anyway, girlfriend, show me the money. My income, my monthly take home is 4665 
Yeah. Expenses are three thousand five hundred eighty-four. That includes rent. Yeah. I have a debt of seven thousand eight hundred and thirty-six from student loans. And I have a liquid savings of thirty thousand and a retirement of twenty thousand. And how are you going to pay for this? Cash. Cash. And the student loans only at one point eight eight percent. And you're stringing yep. that out and paying that along, right? Yes. That's yeah. Correct. And so you're approved. Thank you. You're, you're welcome. And that's because you're going to do this forever. It makes sense. Do it at home. Save the gas. Save everything. You'll save money in the long run. Want to be part? of the Can I Afford It segment. This segment kind of kills me sometimes. But anyway, all you have to do is go to my website, suzyorman.com, and you'll find the information that you need to know there to come and play with me right here. And if you come on the air, we will send you a T-shirt that says you've been approved or denied. Next, I tackle trending topics in Ask Susie. Your kids want to know or you want to know. Who wants to know about money, sir? I think all of them should. I want you to remember exactly what I'm about to say to you right now. Welcome back, everybody. Here we are in the control room at CNBC headquarters. So many ways for you to reach me. Take a look at that screen of yours. You can send in an email. Join me on Facebook. You can even send in a tweet. And if you do, you put hashtag Ask Susie. It will come right to us here in the control room. And if we choose it, you'll be on the air. So April is Financial Literacy Month. So let's see what some tweets can teach. All right. From at the Ethan Hughes, what should I do with the money I receive for high school graduation? Keep it. Keep it. What you should really do is, number one, you can save it for college if you're going to need it for there. Or if you're not going to need money for college or for whatever reason, then go out and get a job and take that money and put up to $5,500 into your Roth IRA. If you did that and you did that now, can you imagine you would have so much money when you were my age? So save it, don't spend it. That's what I would do. Let's see what else we have. At Adam Schechter, my eighth graders and I watch your show as part of our economic lessons. I love that. Anyway, what advice would you give them about money? I hear that we actually have our teacher, Adam Schechter, here right with us. And he has some students, eighth graders, from Alexandria, Virginia, Mark Twain Middle School. Mr. Schechter, how are you, teach? I'm doing well, Susie. How are you? I'm good. So your kids want to know or you want to know? Who wants to know about money, sir? I think all of them should. They... Uh, we try to teach them, uh, teach them well and show them the right way, but we can definitely use some extra help. Mm. So kids, here is what I would want all of you to know. You have to understand as you start to now go into high school, go and get older, that you're going to want all these fancy things around you. A watch, you're going to want new clothes, you're going to want to look cool and everything, because everybody else is going to think that's the way to be. I don't want you to be that way. I want you to remember exactly what I'm about to say to you right now. Things, the things around you will never define who you are. Who you are defines everything else around you. You don't need labels to say who you are. You need who you are to define everything you wear, everything you do, everything that you say. Am I making sense to you, kids? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, so nothing will be more important that than saving money, being respectful of money, not getting into debt, respecting your parents if they don't have the money to give you something because some kid has it and you want it. You don't need things like that. All you need is self-worth. You need self-respect. You need to understand that you are who you are regardless of the money you have around you. And if you can go through life like that, making yourself your number one priority and then money, and then after you have money, then things, I'm telling you, you're going to live a really great life. Now, what do you think, Mr. Schechter? I think that sounds great to me. What do you guys think? 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thanks a lot. Yeah. All right, there we go. All right, Mr. Schechter, thanks so much for making them smart money kids. You're welcome, Susie. Thanks for having us on. All right, everybody. All right, let's go back to the studio, and here's what's coming up next. Carrie wants to know, Susie, how are we doing? With the 16-year age difference, we want to make sure we're well prepared to fill in the financial gap. Here is your way to an A. You ready? Take notes, girlfriend. I'm ready. People first, then money. You're on the air. I had gotten a credit card through a relative, but I had used their Social Security name, number, and I wanted to know how I could go about paying it off without having to, you know, to get into trouble by the law and everything. Uh, let, let's get honest here. You opened up knowingly or unknowingly a credit card in your name using somebody else's social security number. Well, I use their name and their social security number. D do they know about it? Yeah, they no, do well, now. They do now. How'd they find out? When they went to purchase the car. And what happened? They were turned down. I know it was wrong. I knew it was wrong, but I did it anyway. Please don't try to keep being sneaky where you go around his back and somehow figure out how to pay it off. Okay. Isn't going to help. Go to him and see how you can work this out together. And hopefully you've learned from this, but this is a case where people do come first, put him first, and go and be honest. Welcome back to the Susie Orman Show. Hi, Susie. I'm 39 and my husband is 55. We have two children, five and six. With the 16-year age difference, we want to make sure we're well prepared to fill in the financial gap. Our goal is for us to retire together when he's 70 and I'm 54. We want to take off and travel. Susie, how are we doing? Well, Carrie, welcome to the Susie Orman Show. Hey, girlfriend. Hey, sweetheart. So here's the question. How do you think you're doing? If you were going to give yourself a grade, what would it be? Um, a C. A C. I have to ask, what would you be doing better? Um, I know that we need life insurance because yeah. we've watched you. We're just not exactly sure of the amount that we need, and I know that we need long-term care insurance for my husband. All right. Let's show everybody what you got going for yourself, sweetheart. So as you heard... Carrie is 39. Eric, her husband, is 55. They have approximately $264,000 in retirement, $40,000 in emergency funds, $192,000 in investments. Their current home is worth $600,000. And here's the good news. Take a look at those eggs up there, everybody. Zero <laughs> consumer debt. Zero mortgage debt. Zero, zero, zero. They have a net worth of about $1.1 million. I'm a-liking this so far. <laughs> All right, let's show everybody your income versus your expenses. You have monthly income after taxes of about $9,000. Your monthly expenses are about $4,300. So you actually have in excess, excess every single month, $4,619. If I were going to give you a grade, I wouldn't be giving you a C. I didn't do that. Right? I looked at your situation very carefully, and I have to tell you, I gave you a B plus. Great. Mm. Because the things that you need to fix are so little that it shouldn't be penalizing yourself. You've done such a great job job, really. You own your home outright. You're contributing to your retirement accounts. So here's just a few things that I want you to keep in mind. And I'm just going to make an alteration here. Okay. And before I even explain this to you, you just have to understand that if you retire at 54, you're not going to be able to access the money that's in your 401k plans and everything without penalty. So I'm just going to change it to 55 and 70. That's just one more year or the year you turn 55. But if you were to do everything exactly like you're doing right now, when you retire, Carrie, then all of the, the health insurance, the dental insurance, all of that goes away. If that goes away and you have to pay for it out of your own pocket, plus the fact that you said what you do need long-term care insurance, and you will need it on both of you, your goal 
per month I've set at $6,500. You're going to have like $900,000 in retirements. You're going to be able to have $640,000 from about, you know, the money that you're saving right now that's after taxes. And to make a very long story short, you're going to have about $7,400 a month of after-tax income when you're 55, he's 70, and your goal is 6500 that's cutting it a little close to tell you the truth. However, here is your way to an A. You ready? Take notes, girlfriend. I'm ready. All right. First, you do need to get long-term care insurance. You do need to save even more than you are saving because I'd like to see you even have more money there. So maybe cut back on your expenses a little bit. As you said, you are way underinsured currently. You only have 50 thousand dollars of insurance. You need on you a one million dollar 15 year level term and your husband should get a one million dollar 10 year level term and that should be fine. The other thing that I want you to do is I want you to increase your Roth IRAs that you're currently contributing to to the max. That would be $458 a month for you, $541 a month for your husband. Next, what I want to see happen for you is that you currently have a lot of money that are in either old employers 401ks or traditional IRAs. I want you to little by little convert them to a Roth IRA. So later on in life, when you do go to take out this money, you're not going to have to be losing so much of it for taxes. If you did all that, you would have an A, but really, you are doing great. You have been a good TV watcher. <laughs> Up next, one more thing that I want you to know. I love when everybody gets educated on money. Thinking twice before you swipe is really good advice. Hey, boyfriend, if your goal is to save, you are approved to wake up. Real-time updates on the markets, the news, the weather. And wake up with us. The CNBC Alarm Clock app. Free on the App Store and on Google Play. Welcome back to the Suzy Orman Show. Well, that brings us almost to the end of the Suzy Orman Show. But before we go, there's still one more thing I want you to know. As I said earlier, this month is Financial Literacy Month. And to that end, I love when everybody gets educated on money. Recently, the Federal Reserve Bank of New York held its annual financial awareness video festival. I was honored to be one of the celebrity judges on the panel. The competition challenges local New York College and university students to create a 30-second video on how to build good credit. More than 40 videos from 11 colleges and universities were submitted. I watched every single one of them. They were all great. But here's the winner. Thinking twice before you swipe is a really good advice because sometimes paying for your mistakes takes sacrifice. I had to put aside stuff I like and I even had to return my new car to the dealership. I had to act responsibly and smart, so I came up with a plan. I only bought the necessary stuff. I never bought anything I couldn't afford. I set up a payment plan and it took me eight years to pay off my debt and repair my credit. But you know, it's worth it at the end because new doors open up and new opportunities come along. Don't you just love it that kids are getting involved in learning about money? Now you know. But here's what I really want you to know when it comes to your money, and it's this. There's only one thing that really matters. People first, then money, then things. Now you stay safe. Bye-bye. <laughs>